Hi everybody. My name is Rajavanya. I am from Bangalore, India. I am an indie game developer and a freelance developer. I quit my job about two months ago. I've been loving uh, Imp MOOC course so far. I'm gonna miss you all guys. This is the final assignment. Uh, thanks to Professor Luden Stearns also. So today I'm going to demonstrate uh, how different types of amplitude envelopes in a synthesizer of my choice. I'm going to give you musical examples and different configurations. So the synthesizer of my choice is analog software instrument which comes built in with uh, Ableton. So you can see that it's loaded on the screen. That's analog. Say hi. Hi. Analog says hi. Okay, that's not analog. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so let's get to the oscillator. We have the oscillator section, the filter section, the amplitude envelope section, uh, LFO and the volume. So there you see the oscillator is already set. I've reduced the volume a little bit and it's set in sawtooth. There's no filter. Filter is completely disabled, so uh, nothing's going to get processed. And uh, finally, we have the amplitude envelope. Let me explain uh, the four main parameters of an amplitude envelope. The first thing is the attack. So if you look at this, when I move the dot on top, you can see that the attack time changes. The minimum attack time this allows is five minutes, five milliseconds and you can increase up to 15 seconds and then you have something called the DK that also starts from 5 to 15 seconds 5 milliseconds to 15 seconds and then if you hold the DK button and move your mouse up in the Y axis you can see that the sustain level changes and the last one uh, is the release time so please note that attack DK and release are times uh, a measured in time in seconds or milliseconds and the sustain is actually a volume level uh, it goes from 1 to 0 uh, is a level okay so and attack uh, and DK uh, are basically how the level of sound travels so attack is basically how long it takes to go from 0 to a certain peak level and DK is how long it takes to come down from that peak level to a certain another level it can be you can set it to zero or whatever sustain is is a level uh, where sustain happens as long as you hold your keyboard key so if you set the sustain level to 50 percent as long as you hold the keyboard key it will complete the decay and stay at the sustain phase and release is basically the amount of time it takes to go down to zero once you release your key let us look at certain configurations first one is the switch so to get a switch configuration what you're going to do is increase uh, reduce the decay time to 5 milliseconds attack time to 5 milliseconds the least decay times and attack times reduce the release time to the least available uh, which is 5 milliseconds here but a lot of your synthesizers should allow you to do uh, zero even now if you look at it when I press the button uh, it immediately goes to it has a very low attack time so it immediately goes to top which is full level and then stays there forever because the sustain level is one so sustain is basically what is the volume level when you keep your keyboard key pressed all right so when I'm going to keep it pressed it's going to allow full volume and when I'm going to release it when I'm going to release the keyboard key how long does it take for it to get down to the zero level that is the release time which is five milliseconds which will be very immediate so let's hear the sound now this is the switch configuration so you can see that it has got a very sharp uh, or almost zero increase level you can't really notice it increasing from zero to top because it immediately goes to the full volume stays there as long as you press the keyboard and when I release it immediately the sound disappears so this is the switch configuration it's almost like when you press the key it goes to the full volume level and when you release it it immediately comes down so let's look at board instruments like flute or piano so so to get a board instrument effect, like a, not, not a piano, sorry, violin. So let's say you want to get something like a violin. Uh, so you can see that I have to keep a slightly uh, less attack time and lesser decay time. And uh, 
you know sustained level of whatever you want usually kept at you know maybe at 60 or 70 percent and then uh, short release time okay so now let's try this let's increase the release and let's increase the decay as well so that so to get an even more nicer effect so you can see that there's a very sharp increase in the beginning then the, it goes down to a certain level and then when you release the key it gradually goes down to zero so you'll also notice that this synthesizer is different from what professor has shown in the class because uh, the slopes are very curved so you have an option here called a linear and exponential so if you press linear you can see that it goes back to what professor luden has shown shown in the class so but uh, exponential i guess gives a more eased out effect which uh, most people prefer and if you look at the real world examples most of the you know things that happen are in a easing fa easing fashion So this is a, a configuration for a board instrument or a blown instrument like flutes or violins. And next let's look at a percussive sound. A percussive sound doesn't have any sustain level. That's the main difference. So bring the sustain level all the way down to zero. If you remember we started with a percussive sound. So let me explain it again so that you know it's very clear. So it has a very short attack time, a slight decay time and a very short release time as well. This can also be used in a plucked you know instrument uh, like a guitar but usually guitar has a uh, plucked instruments have a longer release time sorry that's way too long so that's more like a plucked instrument if you look at it uh, the decay is long uh, relay release is long and the sustain is zero and the attack is short. Percussive sound like I already told you. So damped percussive is having more decay. So now let's finally look at this crazy configuration called quirk. So quirk is basically uh, setting a really low decay time but high release time so you have to notice one thing the release phase begins as soon as you release the key all right so it doesn't matter whether you are in attack phase or dk phase when you release the key so let's say you set the dk phase to 100 milliseconds and i release my key somewhere between 50 milliseconds so it immediately jumps to release phase which is 460 69 milliseconds so the point at which i release my key whatever is the current volume level from that point the release phase starts so what happens here is if i hold the note longer and release nothing happens why because the longer i hold it quickly travels the attack phase and the decay phase and the, the end of the decay phase you know it goes to zero so from there even though the release phase starts, you can't hear anything because it's all zero, zero volume level. So all you hear is a blip. So, but let us just press the keyboard key really fast. I'm, I'm using a keyboard, actual computer keyboard, so it's pretty hard to do that. Ah, but you can see that, you can see the effect of it. Maybe I'll increase the decay a little bit. 100 milliseconds is not enough for me. I'm not fast enough. So, and let me increase the release longer so that it's noticeable. Yeah. So that there you go. So now, let us let me hold the key longer. You can see that it settles down very fast. But if I tap it slightly. And it, it goes, it works longer. Why? Because again, let me explain. When I tap it really fast, it is somewhere in between the attack and decay phase. So 
the volume level has not completely gone down to zero. So wherever I leave at that level, it starts the release phase, which is about 1.11 seconds right now. So you can see, you can hear a longer slope to, it takes longer to come down. But if I hold the key long enough, it completes the whole decay phase. So, you know, at the end of decay phase, the volume level is zero. So the release ha after that, even though the release phase is happening, you don't actually hear anything. So let me uh, reflect on the whole thing again. Uh, we have the, I'm using analog software instrument with Ableton Live and you have four parameters, attack, decay, sustain and release. Attack, decay and release are measured in time with milliseconds or seconds. Sustain is a level. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you. Thank you for watching.